The Macri 39M machine has a new driver for some upcoming shows. We'll talk about who that is. Plus, we'll get into the cloak and dagger world of dirt lay model racing and what to get into this weekend. Let's go. It's Friday, July 21st. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. We'll jump uh, right in today with the recent breaking news in the sprint car world. With Anthony Macri out of the 39M and set to run for Clausen Marshall and Indy race parts in the near future, the Macri Motorsports team and its future were a big question mark. Lance DeWeese filled the seat in the car at Eldora for the million in the King's Royal, but that was only a stopgap with DeWeese committed to Don Kreitz and the 69K. This morning, though, the Macri team announced they have hired California driver Justin Sanders to pilot their car in some upcoming shows. Sanders' first race with the 39M and crew chief Joe Mooney will be on July 27th with the All-Stars at Lake Ozark. The team does plan on being at Grandview Speedway for next week's high limit race, but they're going to announce a different driver for that show. It will not be Sanders. The rest of the upcoming schedule that the team released includes I-70 and Knoxville with the All-Stars, the Kokomo High Limit Show, everything around the Knoxville Nationals, the 360 Nationals, Cappy Front Row Challenge, 410 Nationals. Then they've also got the High Limit Show at Husets and the Jackson Nationals. It's basically an entire month in the Midwest for a team that is normally heavily based in central Pennsylvania. I would assume this means that Sanders is done for the time being in the Swindell Speed Lab 39, which the team alluded to in a tweet. Uh, and at least this initial schedule won't affect Sanders' ride with Mitri out in California. There isn't another NARC show right now until August 26th at Stockton. In a story at SprintCarUnlimited.com, Sanders told Jeremy Elliott that they are going to run the schedule and see where things go. But it sounds like if it goes well, Sanders could be a more permanent solution in that car. Sanders is indeed done with Swindell. That team could look to Hunter Schoenberg, who drove that car at Eldora last weekend. Schoenberg is driving this weekend for Jake Kaiser in Ohio. As for Sanders and Macri, I think this is a solid pickup for that team. Uh, it's obviously good news that they're going to continue on even without Anthony in the seat, and hopefully it won't take long for Joe and Justin to get things sorted out. Drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this move for the 39M. All right, with that breaking news out of the way, let's dive into my main topic for today. Watching last night's Lucas show at Husets, Ricky Thornton Jr. was your winner after getting the lead from Jonathan Davenport on lap 19, and he survived to the end on a latch down, rubber down racetrack. Afterwards, thanks to Flow Racing's cameras and their drone, we watched RTJ roll across the scales and then hit the droop check. And just as soon as the droop check was complete, an SSI Motorsports crew member was in place to run that cover across the back of the 20RT just to keep any snooping eyeballs away from their chassis while the car sat in victory lane. And this has become fairly standard procedure for that car and a lot of others. It's just an ex a small example of the secretive world of dirt late model racing. Technology changing all the time, teams are always pushing the envelope to find more speed, and when they get an advantage, they don't want anyone to know about it. Whether it's bodies and aerodynamics, or shocks, or chassis, uh, or suspension geometry, or strange devices, uh, they'll go to all sorts of lengths to keep their advantages hidden. And normally, when you see the rear of the car not on the racetrack, it's going to be covered up with one of those sponsor banners. Cars on jack stands with the tires off usually have a piece of plastic covering up the hubs and wheel wells. Anything they can do to obscure those prying eyes and camera lenses. If you ever had a super late model race or you're watching on streaming, watch how crew guys and other drivers will look over their competitors' cars around the podium celebrations, looking for any little clues they can get as to why maybe they were fast. We literally see the same things on the Formula One grid. These are things, too, that I've asked both Kevin Rumley and Vinny Giuliani about in the past. Rumley, the owner of the car that Kyle Larson has been racing the last few years and who's had a lot of success with Jonathan Davenport, Longhorn Chassis, uh, Bill Stein Shocks. Uh, Vinny is now a crew guy for Davenport. He's an engineer. He worked in NASCAR. He's been a crew chief. Rumley talked about all the cameras and photos taken of his R&D car, but mentioned that if you're trying to copy what somebody else is doing, you'll always be a step behind. And Vinny said, even when you don't have trick stuff going on, you cover things up just the same to keep up appearances. It's like a poker hand who can keep the same face, whether they have the full house or whether they're bluffing at the pot. There are games being played all the time, and it's necessary to participate uh, if you want to stay at the top. If you want to see those past conversations, uh, I'll link to them in the video description below. And just a few weeks ago, racer Austin Kirkpatrick posted a video to his YouTube channel about the straight front axle car he built a few years ago and all of the trials and tribulations he went through to make it all work. Eventually, he was able to have some success with it, but after the 2020 season ended, the major late, uh, late model sanctioning bodies outlawed his design. 
If you haven't watched that video, I definitely recommend checking it out. It gives you a really good idea of what it takes to design new stuff and just how many different areas are not covered by these rule books. Kirkpatrick, who's known for creating his own design, spent 30 minutes and really only covered a handful of topics. I'll link to that video below as well. This idea of secrets and innovation is something I feel like doesn't get enough attention when it comes to dirt lay model racing. And I think it really adds to the intrigue of these races if you know what's going on. We've touched on it briefly with the chassis wars, but it's a big reason why performance is so cyclical for some of these drivers. These crews are constantly trying stuff, they're testing, they're building new parts and pieces. And I'd love to see, you know, maybe a guy like Kirkpatrick be invited by some of the streamers or even build out his own YouTube channel, let us uh, in on some of the technical side of things. I feel like we have much less of this with sprint cars and open wheel racing, just because the cars are obviously so much easier to see what everyone has. Plus most of the parts and pieces come from off the shelf, but the same isn't true with a dirt late model. The possibilities are pretty much endless with these cars and Kirkpatrick's video really shows you that. But because everything is so cloak and dagger all the time, it's hard to get any real details, but maybe that's fun too. All right, before we shut it down for the week, I do want to hit on a few races. Besides RTJ winning last night at Houston's, Davenport's third place finish drew him even closer to Overton for third in the chase standings. Devin Moran's 18th place finish didn't do him any favors, and if JD stays hot, this may come down to Overton versus McCready for that final spot at Eldora. Tonight at Houston's is two rounds of heat racing with passing points and finishing points on the line to set Saturday's feature lineups. I was asked how that point system works, uh, but I didn't find anywhere online where it's talked about or the Lucas rulebook. None of it really spells it out, so uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, hopefully, the Houston track crew also can make some improvements to avoid the rubber the next couple of nights. At BAPS last night with the World of Outlaws, David Gravel outdueled Brad Sweet to pick up his series best ninth win of the year. Uh, Sweet, Logan Schuhart joined him on the podium. Headed to Williams Grove the next two nights, Gravel leads Sweet by six points in the championship with Macedo now 32 back. Kyle Larson, Lance DeWeese were no-shows on Thursday after being at BAPS on Wednesday. We should see DeWeese back tonight, and I have no idea what Larson's plans are at this point or why he wasn't there last night. I do think we all need to keep an eye on the business of sprint car racing this second half of 2023. The rumor mill is working overtime right now, and the ground is very much still shifting and moving. There seems to be a lot of unrest in the sprint car community, which I think is odd because things are maybe as good as they have ever been from a lot of different sides. But as is usual, we can never have nice things. At Utica Rome last night, Matt Shepard picked up another short track Super Series win, holding off Matt Williamson late. Tim Fuller finished third. Ross Chastain needed a provisional to start the main event, uh, finished down in 25th. Short track Super Series heads to Canada next week for stops at Granby and RPM. Elsewhere this weekend, the All-Stars begin a Midwest swing with stops at 34 Raceway, Spoon River, and Red Hill. We'll see what Anthony Macri can continue to do in the 7BC and if Zeb Wise can run those guys down. Indiana Sprint Week gets started for the USAC National Sprint Cars. They've got Gas City tonight, Kokomo tomorrow, Lawrenceburg on Sunday. Only 32 points separate the top three in the standings right now, so a lot can and will change over the next several days. We've got the Extreme Midgets back going again, USMTS Modifieds, the ASCS, and a lot more on the card coming up. And for my guy out in California, Thomas Soper, Verona Speedway has the IMCA uh, Summer Nationals the next two nights just outside San Diego. Bunch of different divisions, and you can watch it live over on imca.tv. That's it for the show this week. Make sure you hit the streaming schedule at dirttracker.com slash watch tonight to see what your options are through the weekend. Hope you guys enjoy the dirt racing weekend out there. We'll see you right back here on Monday.